Morning, dear students, this is Dr. Anjit again. So today we are going to see the second part of Gleason scoring. We have already discussed about the first part of Gleason scoring in the previous video. If you have in any case missed it, please go back to the channel and have a look at it first because it's just going to be a continuation of that. In the previous video, we saw about patterns, we saw about scores, we saw how to add these scores and we saw how to give a Gleason grade group. Right? Those are the basic things we laid out in the last videos. Today, what we are going to see is, we are going to see about the Gleason pattern. What are the patterns which are then going to be in Gleason and how I am going to give a score so that we can arrive to a Gleason grade groups. Right? So the first thing, we saw that in the previous video, we had only three patterns, three scores. Score three pattern, score four pattern and score five pattern. We are just going to look at the microscopy and the terminologies, how to derive these patterns. The first one is score three. When do I, when I look at a biopsy of prostate, when do I give or what pattern when I look at microscopy, I am going to give a score 3. So the per patterns are going to be like this. Right? So there are one main thing and two or three supplement to it. First thing is what I am going to see is when I am going to see glands, when a person, when a pathologist is going to see a well defined gland formation, right? a gland should be perfect, a well defined gland, which means like any other gland which you must have seen in your hist right from your histology, a gland with a perfect lumen and they should be discrete. Discrete in the sense they should not be fused. Like for example, look at this gland, look at this gland, here is a gland, here is a gland and they are fused to each other, right? They, they are not fused to each other, you have a space between them, you have a space between them. Here, you have well-formed glands with a perfect lumen and they should be discrete. Here also, though they are crowded, still I can see a space between them. I have to see space between them. When I am seeing a space between them and a well-formed lumen, I give a pack score of 3. So this is the basic of a score 3 pattern. Right? We will now go to the score 4 pattern. When I am going to look in microscopy, the, the following features, I am going to give a score of 4. Right? So what are they? First thing, so in score 4 pattern, first thing, an ill-defined gland. So when do I call it an ill-defined gland? I will call it an ill-defined gland when the lumen is not perfect. I don't have a perfect lumen. I am going to call it ill-defined gland. Very narrow, very constricted gland. I am going to call it an ill-defined gland. Second thing, when the glands have no space between them, no space, no intervening space between glands, the glands may be well formed, but there is no space between them. For example, look at this picture. What I am highlighting, you can see a well formed gland, you can see in perfectly normal lumen, but these glands are juxtaposed with each other. Right? They are juxtaposed with each other, there is no well defined space between them. Here, yeah, I have a space, but this glands, the lumen which I am marking here, is not well formed. So, ill defined glands. Or glands with no space between them or two more things. When I'm going to have a cribriform pattern, I'm sure we must have heard about cribriform pattern in few other cancers as well. This is a cribriform pattern. It looks like a Swiss cheese, right? Holes in between them. Cribriform pattern. Or if you're going to see a glomerulus. Glomerulus-like pattern, right? So this one. When I've circled something, it looks like a glomerulus, right? So I'm having an ill-defined gland formation without a lumen or well-defined gland formation with no space between them, a cribriform pattern or glomeruli pattern. When a pathologist is going to look at this in microscopy, I am going to give a score pattern of 4. So what is 5 means? A 5 is the highest score which we are going to give, a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. Which means, when I am going to see images like this, no glands at all, I am going to think of 5. There is no perfect gland formation, I am going to think of 5. So no glands means what do I see? When I'm going to see sheets of tumor cells, when the tumor cells are going to be just widespread in sheets, I'm going to think of a score 5. Or as the second image uh, I pointed out here, I'm having single cell infiltration. You can see them. They're single cells. Blue dots. Blue dots are nuclei. Nuclei are cells. I'm having a single cell infiltration. No glands again. So when I have a single cell infiltration, I'm going to be worried again. Right? Fourth one is this. When you look at this, what does it strike to you? First thing you, most of you have struck is necrosis. In the center, I have a necrosis. That's your famous comedo necrosis. We must have learned the, them in breast, right? Necrosis in the center. So when I'm going to have no glands at all, single cell infiltration or sheets of tumor cells with necrosis in the center, comedo necrosis. When a pathologist is going to see any of these, he's going to give a score 5. So I know pattern, score 3, score 4, as well as score 5. So now we are going to apply this to the last video. Again, I am insisting, if you have not seen the last video or if you have forgotten, 
please have a look at the last video, write your notes and come back and continue from here. I'll just have a quick recap about the last video. So what we saw in the last video was, we saw about the patterns course that we have explained it here below in this video. And we saw about how to add the scores. We have to add the scores. In case of a prostate biopsy, how we added is the major pattern, add the score first, and the worst pattern, add it as second, right? And then once you add them, we add something called as grade groups. We had grade groups. In grade groups, we had one, two, three, four, five. So the first grade group was your grade group one. I'm just writing grade one. It was your three plus three score, and it's going to be six. Fine. 3 plus 4 will be grade group 2. 2. It's 7, but second one is also 7. But if the predominant pattern is 4, I'm going to give it grade group 3. I'll have a grade group of 4, then I'm going to have a total score of 8. Whatever it may be. It may be 4 plus 4, 3 plus 5, or 5 plus 3. It doesn't matter. So grade group 5, when do I call it grade group 5? When I'm going to have 9 or 10. 4 plus 5, or 5 plus 4, or 5 plus 5. When everything score comes to 10, I'm going to have grade group 5. This is how we classify Gleason. Right? I'm sure now we are going to venture into a question which is asked in the reason Ames exam. Now the question looks very simple and it's easy to solve for us. Read the question carefully. Prostate needle core biopsy. That's my first hint. Why I'm saying this is, in the previous video we saw that we are going to score differently for prostate needle biopsy and differently for a radical prostatectomy. So look at that first. Shows an Asinar adenocarcinoma predominant in my cribriform pattern. Cribriform is score? Perfect. Score 4, right? And fused glands, that's also score 4. And a minor component of 5% with single cell infiltration, right? So the question says the predominant pattern is score 4 and the worst pattern 5% is score 5. So my score is going to be 4 plus 5. Clear till this? So when I add 4 plus 5, I'm going to have a score of 9. And a score of 9 or 10, I'm just going back to the previous slide, score of 9 or 10 is going to make Gleason grade group 5. Right? So we have Gleason grade group 5. That's the, that was the question asked. I hope now it's clear, much clearer to you guys. Right? Thank you for your patient listening and thank you for your time. What we are going to do in the next series of Gleason is, I'm going to come live either in Instagram or YouTube. Please. Let's see wherever it's possible and if it's possible. I'm going to give you five case scenarios, five different ways for you guys, just problems to understand and you have understood the concept already. We are just going to apply them here and we're going to solve, right? All the very best and thank you for your time and I'm sure all of you guys would have understood. If you have any doubts, please comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer your queries, right? Thank you. Bye-bye from Dr. Anjitayar.